Hey, Daniel Levi from ReviewStash.com, and again, just to mention, no tripod, no lighting setup, no backdrops. I'm at home right now, so I'm kind of hand-holding my camera, and you'll have to bear with me. Just thought I'd do a quick video to show the uh, Digital Concepts TR9 50-inch tripod. Um, if you price match at Fry's Brick and Mortar to Fry's website, you can snag this tripod for about $7 in-store. Um, so I just figured, you know... What the heck, let's see what $7 gets you in terms of a tripod. Um, probably not the best idea. So here's the packaging, pretty straightforward. Oh boy, you get a free carrying case. Let's go over the uh, specifications. So there is a three-way fluid pan head and a very small bubble level. Um, very small, not really useful at all. And you'll notice that, oh boy, there's a three-year warranty. Uh, keep your receipt because you will probably be using it. It has a quick-release mount. You also don't see that on a $7 tripod. Um, and again, for good reason. An elevated center column to get a little bit more height. Definitely be careful with that. And a center column brace, which is pretty nice because this uh, tripod needs all of the extra stability it can get. Three-section channel leg locks for extending the height and rubber feet. Oh boy, what a feature. Rubber feet. Um, there are no spikes on this, so um, good luck using this outdoors. Let's, let's take a look at the actual tripod itself. So, if you remember, there was a free carrying case included. It's a little black pouch. There's a strap here. You can put this on your shoulder if you really want to carry it around proudly. And there's a locking clasp at the end. Um, not bad if this tripod does the job for you and it lasts and you're lucky to get an okay build quality uh, product here. Um, you can throw this into luggage pretty quickly and uh, pretty decent for travel. Not bad. But uh, here is the tripod itself. Look at this sweet tripod. Ah, uh, yeah, there it is. Super sturdy metal, digital. Um, if you don't use any of the other height settings and you just keep it at standard height, it's not a bad little tabletop tripod and it'll do an okay job of holding most cameras, but once you actually extend out the legs and you can see just how small the legs will actually be, um, anything above the weight of a micro four thirds camera or say like a Nex, a Sony Nex type camera, and this will just fall over in the wind. It will be of absolutely no use to you. And if you try to put a heavy lens on your camera, even on the GH2 or the GH1, which are very lightweight cameras, this, this will happen. Or it'll sway, and your pictures will come out absolutely very poor. There will be very poor pictures. So let's go over the features of this bad boy. You've got the incredible bubble level on the side there. Let's take a peek at that guy. Oh boy. Check out that. It's almost readable. The camera, the camera's definitely lying to you. This is pretty much impossible to see uh, when you're actually using the tripod. Alright. Then you have the uh, center column adjustment right here. Yep. You have the panning adjustment here. And then you have the tilt adjustment here. You can lift the head up. Not bad. Pretty standard. And then if you unscrew this, you can then freely tilt up and down. And the up and down movement isn't too bad. Uh, when you have a heavy camera on here, though, it'll be like this. Uh, so keep that locked in the upright position. Now, the worst part about this tripod is the painful panning. It's, it's pretty funny. Don't think you're going to be able to use this for anything even kind of related to video. It's, it's kind of a joke. Oh, uh, yeah. Look at that. That's just plastic on plastic grinding right there is what that is. Yeah. That's bad news. Now, something you don't usually see in a, uh, well, you don't usually see a $7 tripod, um, and a cheap tripod is a quick release. Um, so, let's take a look at that. Here is the quick release mounting. Pen. It's a little bit awkward 
to remove the quick release because you have to pull this thing all the way over and out. Kind of tricky to do on a large camera. See, I just dropped the uh, quick release plate. Here is the very small um, quick release plate. This will ha give you full access to everything underneath your big bodied uh, camera. Uh, it's about perfect size for a point and shoot, which makes me think they should have explicitly said on this uh, point and shoot cameras only, because that's really what this is good for. Then you've got this screw right there, which is made out of the absolute best quality pot metal. Um, this will break off in like a week. That's pretty much my estimate there. But you know it works. Um, can't show you right now because I'm using the camera to shoot this video. You can put a GH2 up here and with a uh, plastic or a lightweight uh, pancake type lens like the uh, 20 millimeter or the old plastic 1442, um, as long as you don't use the last set of legs, it's fine. It'll hold things. Uh, you could use this for a flash. In fact, this would actually be perfect for a slave flash. Um, but if you're actually planning on putting your high-end DSLR on here and a really heavy lens, then um, you really should reconsider that. I don't recommend that at all. Um, yeah, so let's take a look and see how this is when it is fully extended. So you go over here. You've got these brilliant legs. Yeah, that's just not the most satisfying noise. And, you know, it is 50 inches, and that's when you remove the center column here. I'm not going to do that. So, that's about what you'll get. Uh, not a whole lot of height. It'll do the job, though. What I really want to point out here is just how ridiculously thin this bottom set of legs is. It's... look at that. Look at that. That's the surface area that all of the force of your camera is making contact with the ground. Look, that's ridiculous. If you think this is going to hold anything more than a point-and-shoot, or again, a really lightweight camera, then you're crazy. Um, so that is the Digital Concepts TR9. I would probably pass on it, but if you're going to put a slave flash on this, or, you know, something lightweight, and you can snag it for $7 at Fry's, it's not bad for what it is. Um, be sure to keep your receipt, though. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys.